Hey folks, Professor K here. So one of the things that I know is the toughest thing to get when you're first starting to learn web development is how do I debug things? And since you're probably starting out with HTML right now, I thought it would be good to go through some quick tips for debugging HTML so that when you get stuck, you know what to do. Let's get started. All right, so here we have an HTML debugging practice code along. I've included a link to this in the description so that you can follow along too. But basically what we're gonna do here is we're going to try and figure out why this code here isn't working as expected. What I expected when I saw this code was to see a title in a bigger font and then in a smaller font, a paragraph, a list of items, and then another paragraph with a link in it. And that brings us to our first thing that you can do when you're debugging HTML. Talk through what's expected. If you wrote something, take a look at what's happening and talk through line by line what should be happening. What is it that you're not seeing that should be happening here and isn't? So for example, when I said this should be a title, but this should be smaller, now I kind of know what to look for. This is big, but this should be smaller than that text. So maybe I know now where can I start looking in my HTML to see what's going wrong. So now that we've identified the problem and we've talked through what it is we're expecting to see, the next thing that we should do is take a look and make sure our code is nice and clean and neat. And you'll see why we're going to do this in a moment. What I'm going to do is inside my HTML here in CodePen, I'm going to make sure that everything is properly indented. When I say things are properly indented, that means that when you open a tag, the next line should be indented one indentation further, just like this. And then when you go to close the line, that should be de-indented. We're going to notice something here. We have an opening H1, but we don't have a closing H1 tag. Remember that you are going to use a slash, just like this, and then H1 to close the tag. And see how CodePen automatically de-indented it? Look at this. Check this out. This has already fixed up a lot of our errors, which brings us to the third thing that you should be checking every time you're having a problem with your HTML. You're going to want to make sure that each of your opening tags has a matching closing tag. So that second and third tip really go hand in hand together. When you indent, you're automatically going to start looking for these closing tags. And then when you see that they're not there, go ahead and add them. So let's go ahead and fix our indentation and also at the same time, take care of those closing tags. So here we have our H1 properly indented. Here's our P tag. And just for the sake of clarity in this video, I'm going to go ahead and make sure there's an opening and closing on each line. And we're gonna do the same thing with this OL tag. Now, one thing that we're going to notice here is that some tags are nested within others. So we might not find that closing tag until further down in the code. That's perfectly okay. Here we're going to say we want the ordered list, that's this over here, the one, two, and three, to start right here before make sure your work is properly indented. And in fact, it does. Here's our list item and it's properly indented. Sometimes people keep it on one line. That's perfectly okay too. But the trouble with keeping things on one line is that sometimes it can be hard to tell where the errors are. And if we go to the end of this and start de-indenting it, look at what we notice here. This isn't actually a closing tag. So let's make that a closing tag and then do an opening tag, indent, and another closing tag, and finally that closing ordered list. So that's fixed a lot of our problems. But what I'm still seeing here that I can't figure out is that I wanted this Google to link to google.com. Why might this be happening? I can't click on it. I put in the href like I thought I was supposed to. Why is this not working? This brings us to our next tip, which is if you can't figure out what's going on, put your code through a validator. Validators check and ensure that your code is using the right vocabulary, that it's using the right syntax, that nothing's missing or wonky or off about it. So what we can do is we can just do a Command A to select all and then Command C, and you can use Control if you're on Windows. And we're just gonna look up using Google, the W3C validator. 
you're going to want this first option right here, the W3C Markup Validation Service. This is the official validation service. The W3C is the World Wide Web Consortium. They basically run the web. What we're going to do is we're going to validate. There's a couple ways you can do it. We're going to do it by direct input because we have the code on our clipboard. And we're just going to paste that right in and run a check. And you're going to start to see some errors here. So how do you deal with these errors? You're going to always look for a line number and a column number and another line number. Sometimes you'll see warnings. Don't worry about those. Look for red errors first. So we're going to prioritize some of these things we're seeing in here. OK, so error start tag seen without seeing a doc type first. So it says it expected to see this doc type HTML. Let's go ahead, copy that, and put this right up at the top of our HTML. We'll go ahead and hit Save. Now that hasn't actually done anything there. CodePen is going to say that that's really not supposed to be there. So we're going to take this back out because CodePen automatically adds this for you. So now we know that's not the source of our error. Let's keep going. This is the same thing. Head is missing a required instance of child element title. We already know that because only stuff within the body tag goes in CodePen. So let's keep working down the page. Here's another error. Element link is missing one or more of the following attributes. Item prop property rel. Now this is weird. I'm not familiar with these attributes. As, I, as I'm reading this, I'm like, huh, this isn't what I'm really looking for. So if I think this through, if this is starting to look like stuff I'm not familiar with, now is a good time to go and double check the documentation. Is this really the best way to link to a URL? So I use the link tag here, but maybe that's not right. So from here, I can just Google how to link to a page in HTML. And when I do that, let's go to the first result. And we can see here, taking a look at this, that HTML links the syntax is actually a href equals. Ah, oh, darn. No wonder that's not working. Let's go ahead and try that back in our debugging practice. So here we're going to go to a href equals google.com slash a. Oh, and now there is our link there. Now it's going to say not found. You really should have an HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. Bonus points if you want to put the S in there. That makes it secure. But now we have nice, valid, and clean code. And if we were to go through and continue running through the validator, we would have a lot of better code in here. You can also check things like style attributes. So here, notice that class has page title. You really want to have quotes around those and a little hype in here. So that's known as checking for syntax errors. Look for um, ways that you might be missing in equals or quotes or something like that. All of those are really important to HTML, and it can really throw things off. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's go and copy this back into our checker, and we'll just hit check. So there are still a few errors here, but we already know that they're OK because CodePen automatically adds this stuff to the code for us. So that's what you need to debug HTML. And I hope that helps you out. I hope that gets you further along in learning how to create HTML and get yourself unstuck when you get stuck. If worse comes to worse and you just don't know what's going on, you can't figure it out, you can't talk the problem through, try talking your problem through. And I'll get you um, my favorite friend here, your nearest inanimate object or person. This is my rubber ducky here. And this is called rubber ducky debugging or rubber ducky programming. Basically, the idea is that by talking through the problem, you sometimes come to the way to solve it in that process. So remember at the beginning how I was saying, OK, this is everything is really large and I was expecting it to be smaller here, but it's like not really doing the thing I thought it would. And maybe I should look over here. That process of talking through will help you go step by step and start debugging. So don't forget your rubber ducky debugging tool is in your toolbox as well. And with that, Good luck with your debugging. I'm so excited to see what you come up with. I'll see you later.